I'm, I'm sorry, am I interrupting your brownie eating? And I cut my head off again. Great. Are you kidding me right now? Hello, my friends. My name is Christine, and welcome to today's chicken meal prep. Chicken is the name of the game because I ended up with a 40 pound box of chicken. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, please go check out this clearance grocery haul where I got a case of chicken for $1.25 a pound, a boneless, skinless chicken breast. And so now I need to figure out what the heck I'm gonna do with 40 pounds of chicken. I thought we would prep meals for the next couple nights as well as put together some chicken freezer meals. So that's kind of what we're working on. It is the evening before the day where I plan on doing most of my work, but I did wanna get started on tomorrow's dinner and some of the prep I'm doing for the freezer meals tomorrow. So I have in this container about two pounds of chicken breast that I just ch chunked up into bite-sized pieces. And we will be adding this Me Mexican style adobo cooking sauce. I picked this up from my discount store a while back for not very much, maybe like a dollar for this. And all I'm gonna do, <laughs> it's like the easiest meal prep ever. So this dinner is actually gonna be in two nights, um, not tomorrow, but the next night. And so we're just getting it going on the, on the marinade. We are going to dump this entire bottle in my bowl of chicken. I know people are gonna ask where I got these bowls. These are originally from World Market. I don't know if they're available anymore, uh, but if I can find similar on Amazon or something, I will link that below. Wow. Hey Dave, are you right there? Yes ma'am. Come smell this sauce. Oh my gosh, I need to find this sauce and buy more. This smells so good. What sauce is it? This um, Mexican style adobo cooking sauce. Oh, <laughs> that smells good. Yeah, that is great. I haven't tasted it yet, but 10 out of 10 recommend. No! Lick it out of that if you want to taste it. Right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Is it pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, okay, <laughs> buy that, that's good. Okay, I'm just gonna give this a little uh, stirry stir right quick. And what's gonna happen is in two nights, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna saute this in a pan until the chicken's cooked, and we're gonna wrap it in burritos with some black beans and some rice. That is all. It's gonna be like these like adobo chicken black bean rice burrito kind of things. It's gonna be delicious. That's it, that's all, like, I'm done. Um, Haley will put saran wrap on that one. We're gonna save that one in the fridge. And this one I have about, I have more than two pounds. I would say four, four pounds of chicken breast that I sliced that way. So I butterfly it. And I'm gonna use this, um, are, we, are we getting it? Orange citrus, Cuban style orange citrus vinaigrette, also from the Food Network Kitchens. I got this from my discount store as well, about a dollar or so. I like this orange citrus a lot. I've used it a couple times already. And what I'm gonna do with this chicken is we're just gonna marinate overnight. I'm gonna grill it probably tomorrow morning. And then I'm gonna have about four pounds of like marinated grilled chicken. And we're gonna have grilled chicken salads for dinner tomorrow. And then probably the remainder of the grilled chicken we'll use in sandwiches for the following lunch. Okay, so this is two meals right here. And I'm, this orange citrus, I'm telling you, if you get your hands on this, this is very good. This yeah, bowl? this this is good stuff. Like this is really flavorful. I like this a lot. So we're just gonna I'm gonna give this a little mix a rooney. How many weird stirring terms can I use in this video? That's gonna be the trick. It already smells good. So we'll grill this tomorrow morning, mid morning maybe. Oh, that's very full. But that basically three meals prepped and ready to go. Next up, um, I still have a lot of chicken in this. So I did eat up my. 40 pound case into two bowls of 20 pounds each. So I'm working with 20 pounds right now. I don't think I'm gonna get through all 20 right now. We'll see. Okay, I got the big mama jama today. I hate how short this board is. Okay, I'm gonna pre-cook a lot of this chicken, maybe most of it, in my eight quart instant pot knockoff. So this is a Symphonio. Um, and I, yes, I have several of these. I have two six quarts and an eight quart and I use them all. I would say I use the six quart most of the time, but I do only have a family of six. I think if I had a family of eight or 10 or 12 or whatever, I would use the eight quart all the time and not the six. How many chicken breasts can I fit in here? Two. I bet I could do all of this. 
five. You like that? Nine. I feel like the count. One, two, three. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Pretty good yes. That was pretty good. Hey, man, I watched Sesame Street like a boss when I was five. 17 and a half. Wow, I put the rest of that in there. Okay, this is 17 chicken breasts. Look at that. It is mega full. So I'm gonna add, I think, some chicken broth into this, maybe three cups or so to give it a little bit of salt and liquid to cook in. Make sure your seal is like in and good. And let's, uh, this is hard to do backwards, guys. There we go. Close it up, and I have no idea how long this will take. There's a lot of chicken in here. All right, 45 minutes. And away it goes! I'm just gonna let this cook, maybe do a natural release for about 30 minutes or so. And when it's done, we will shred it all up and cut it all up, and we will have, what did I say? 17, is it 17 chicken breasts? 17 and a half or like, 16 and a half. 17-ish chicken breast, totally cooked, shredded up, ready to use in other recipes for tomorrow. I'm gonna put these away and finish this, and we'll check in tomorrow for the rest of my chicken prep. Hoo hoo hoo! Grilling chicken. It actually ended up being less chicken than I thought. I, I don't know that this will feed us for more than two meals, so that's a bummer. Maybe I should marinate some more chicken and cook it because, man, I love like marinated grilled chicken. It's so delicious. Hey, I am cooking up the ancho adobo sauce, cooking sauce. So I'm simmering it in this pan right here. <gasps> it looks really gross actually. I have some black beans heating in here with just some seasoned salt because I had cooked these and uh, had put no seasoning in them at all. So just trying to get some flavor in there as I warm them up. And I have rice going in my Instant Pot. Rice is super, super easy. White rice, just rinse it, put it in here. For me, it's like a one to one and a half ratio. So one cup of rice, one and a half cups of water. I know the instructions say differently, but to me, it's a little dry. Six minutes um, on high, eight minute release, fluff with a fork, and you're done. And then we're taking these huge burritos and we're gonna have like chicken, black bean, rice, burritos. It's gonna be good. So let's get into the majority of the chicken and freezer meal prep. So the first two things I'm gonna do is start cooking my filling for a chicken pot pie. I'm gonna make two large, I think two, maybe three. We'll see how much filling I end up with. Chicken pot pies and we're just gonna freeze them with the raw dough on top. And while that's cooking, we're gonna make some chicken taquitos because those are super freezer friendly. I have in this bowl several stalks of celery, of the remainder of the carrots that I had in my fridge and like two or three chopped onions. My kids are rinsing off russet potatoes outside right now. We're gonna add those as well. And the way I make chicken pot pie is a little bit different than a lot of different recipes that I've seen. It's mostly veggies and very little chicken. And then I thicken it with butter and heavy whipping cream. And if it's still too thin, a little bit of dehydrated potatoes. So when I cooked my chicken, I ended up with some homemade chicken broth, which is what I will use to pour into my pan. I'm gonna dump these in my pot right over there and we will move to the chicken taquitos because it comes together so easily. So I'm gonna go dump these in. Okay, my vegetables are sauteing over here. So we're gonna move to the chicken taquitos, the creamy chicken taquitos. Now, I think I got this recipe from Our Best Bites. I believe I will leave the recipe down below for you. It's so delicious. I'm gonna try and double this and we'll see kind of how much we end up with, but I may end up making another batch, but I don't know if I can fit more than double in this glass bowl. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. So I already cooked up that chicken, like I showed you earlier in the video in my Instant Pot. So I have quite a bit of shredded chicken ready to go, which is what I'll use for this and for my chicken pot pie. So if I was gonna make these taquitos fresh, like right now, I would just spray the top with some cooking spray and stick them right in the oven for 15 minutes. But as it is, I'm going to freeze them. And so when it comes time to cook, it'll be 25 minutes instead of 15. Still super fast and then there's no prep work. I think this is a great option because every time I've made these, everybody raves about them. They're like, oh, I don't know. And then they take a bite and they say, wow, these are delicious. If you do nothing else from this video except make these taquitos, I would say that would be worth watching the video. <laughs> Two thirds cup of cream cheese. You have no idea how much that is. Okay, that does not look like very much. I feel like I might need to triple this. Hmm, okay. I'm gonna triple this and use a bigger bowl. Is that overkill? <laughs> that, looks, that looks like a lot. Okay, one cup, which I think is this entire thing. One cup of soft cream cheese. There we go. 
I feel better about that. We're tripling it. That's what we're doing. I have a big family. They eat a lot. I made this for a family reunion once. I made up the filling and put it in a Tupperware and took it to the family reunion and then just rolled them up with the tortillas last minute and popped them in the oven for 15 minutes for lunch, like a lunch with fruit. For about 30 people, such a hit. Three quarters of a cup of salsa. I am using this guac salsa right here. Oh yeah. If you don't like guacamole, then regular sauce, salsa is probably okay. But I love guacamole, so. Salsa and cream cheese, what else do you need? Oh my gosh, I just had a great idea for like a cream cheese salsa chicken dish. Okay, focus on what I'm doing. <laughs> Lime juice, I'll squeeze uh, two limes in here with my citrus juicer. I love this guy. If you guys don't have one of these, I'll leave it down below. Um, it's one of those things that like, I never thought I knew it needed. <laughs> wow, these are very juicy limes. Okay, maybe I'll go with two or two halves. Maybe I'll go with one whole one and then see kind of how it feels. Cumin, onion powder, garlic powder. And we'll go with one and a half teaspoons of each of these. And cumin, heaping is probably okay. I love cumin, I love the smokiness of it. Now some chili powder, not too much. Okay, time to put chili powder on the list. Uh, one tablespoon of chili powder. Remember, I'm tripling this. It calls for some green onion, which I don't have, so we won't do that. And fresh cilantro, which I rinsed in my salad spinner. If you guys don't have one of these yet, I love it. It's so sturdy. I'm having a hard time breaking it, which is great because I've broken every other one I've ever had. Chop up this cilantro. I'll just do one whole bunch in here. Oh, yeah. I didn't used to like cilantro, but I don't know. My taste buds matured, I guess. I like it now. Because I'm tripling this, we're gonna put in six cups of chicken. Um, here's one of my, I ended up with three of these containers of shredded chicken. And I'm gonna measure in this approximately, <laughs> approximately four, sorry, not four, six cups. Still feel like I need more cream cheese, but we'll kind of see what it looks like once I mix it up. Okay, that's like four, that's probably good and three cups of pepper jack cheese. You can use whatever cheese you like, but my family likes pepper jack quite a bit. So this was just a block that I shredded up with a food processor. Makes it so easy. Okay, three cups-ish of cheese, there we go. And we will mix this up, probably with my hand mixer, just because it makes it quick. Okay, here we go. And if it looks kind of dry, we'll add more stuff. I think I will add the rest of the lime. So it looks like this right now. So just a hair dry. Whoop. We're gonna add more lime and I think some more salsa. This time I'm gonna go just with your standard paste picante. Just a little bit. Maybe fourth of a cup, a third of a cup, somewhere in there. This is what the filling looks like and I'm gonna scoop it in my tortillas and roll them up. I have these huge tortillas and these smaller ones and whatever is fine. If you use the big ones, I would recommend maybe chopping them in half just cause they're really, really large. So we'll just start with one and see where we go and see how many we end up with. Two pans of the chicken taquitos at six each using, I ended up using the huge tortillas. Look how big these are. A whole lasagna noodle would fit this length of this. So these are really, really large. Fill these tight with saran wrap, uh, maybe some wax paper and foil, put the instructions on top and stick these in the freezer. Now, I think that my chicken pot pie filling is about ready for the chicken and the other ingredients. So let's go check that out. Okay, this is looking pretty good to me. So I'm gonna add my chicken. It's probably about four or five cups of cooked chicken. You can cook it any way you like. This is just the shredded chicken from the Instant Pot. So we'll stir that in and add my thickening ingredients. I do like to add some butter for richness. There's seriously no measurements when it comes to this recipe, honestly. It's however much I decide to throw in here <laughs> and however much ends up in here. So I'm just doing a stick because this is a lot. I usually have heavy whipping cream, but I don't today. So we're gonna go with half and half instead, which is also fine. Give it some richness as well. A little bit more pepper. And let me go get my other veggies and toss those in. A little stir to get that butter melting. And I will be right back with my other canned veggies. Okay, I have some canned peas, a 28 ounce can, and I drained it already. This is I found is really the only good use for canned peas. Otherwise they're mush. And I have this like green beans with some shelled beans in here. I don't know what that's about, but 
we're gonna throw that in too. I've used all kinds of vegetables in here, anything from broccoli to asparagus to sugar snap peas. Basically, whatever vegetables you like are going to work in here. So we're gonna stir all this around, taste for salt and pepper. And if it still seems a little thin, like it's a touch liquidy to me, I might add a little bit of dehydrated uh, potatoes just to thicken it a hair before I dump it into my freezer meal pans. Way, hey, hey, more salt. A little bit more pepper too. This is like, I mean, this is a ton of filling here. Let's stir that around. And you know, if it looks too thick, you can add more half and half or chicken broth or something. Too thin, cook it out a little bit or add the potato flakes. Seriously, sharp broccoli in here is really good. And I am gonna just sprinkle a little bit of the dehydrated potatoes, not very much, to thicken it a little bit more. And then we will pour it into our pans and see what we have. Just make sure when you're doing this, just taste it before you actually make the pie and make sure your salt and pepper levels are good because I needed more salt. We are now gonna make my favorite pie crust recipe ever. I will have a link to the recipe on my website. The key to this pie crust is the vinegar and the use of butter flavored shortening. It makes it really, really easy to work with. The shortening does. Butter can be so difficult to work with in a pie crust. The butter flavor makes it taste good and the vinegar helps it to be like super flaky and tender. I have tried so many pie crusts trying to find like the perfect one that tasted good and was easy to work with and this is the winner. I shared it with my stepmom who fell in love with it also and now this is the only one I use for anything. It's really easy to put together although it does make a little bit of a mess and I took my standard recipe and divvied it up into three really small amounts to put into my three pans and I only did a top crust and not a bottom crust and then I moved on to my chicken enchiladas. This is a recipe I got from my sister-in-law way, way back, like early, early on in my marriage. And it is one of the few recipes that I do that calls for cream of whatever soup. So this one's cream of mushroom soup and I am tripling it, which is why you see three cans here. This is the topping I'm mixing up with the sour cream, the milk, and the green chilies. I had gotten a huge can of just whole green chilies and chopped them up myself. And you just mix all that together and that's gonna be like your enchilada sauce. It's kind of like a sour cream chicken enchilada with some cream cheese in the filling with the chicken. It's really delicious. If you have some of these ingredients just around, maybe give it a try anyway. After I did the topping, I mixed up the filling for the chicken enchiladas, which is cream cheese, some spices, and the chicken. There's another one of my chicken containers, so I'm measuring out six cups of chicken for the filling for my three batches of chicken enchiladas. And I'm using my little hand mixer again to mix this all up. And then I'm adding in some sauteed onions and green chilies that I sauteed in some butter. The depth of flavor that adds is really, really nice. So I recommend not skipping that step. And then you just fill it up like normal enchiladas. You see a couple holes in my tortillas because they ripped a little as I was <laughs> separating them out. I'm not the best at that. And filled up all of my freezer tin meal tray thingies. Poured my sauce or my topping all over the top and then topped all of them with cheese. After I got to that point, I topped each one with some wax paper and then foil, labeled the foil, and they were ready to stick into the freezer. I dislike making enchiladas most of the time because they're so time consuming, but I really enjoyed making three batches at once and having it ready for later. Here is what I have so far for the freezer. I think I'm gonna have to move towards not using these because I might run out of room in my freezer. That is definitely an issue. But I have three chicken pot pies, three chicken enchiladas, and two chicken taquitos for the freezer, not including all the chicken I've already marinated. Hopefully I will see you guys back in just a minute with a couple of more last minute I know freezer. this is not a freezer meal, but it is part of the chicken and it's dinner tonight, so I wanted to show it to you. I chopped up two pounds of the chicken and simmered it in this balsamic vinegar Food Network Kitchen's simmer sauce. And we're serving it with, some people are having some instant potatoes because I had them, so we're using them. I don't prefer them, but it was fast. I went ahead and roasted the radishes in the air fryer. And here is my opinion, because I already tried one. They still have kind of a peppery, bitter undertone, but I do like them. I probably wouldn't eat them plain, but if like you wanted to do ketchup or barbecue sauce or something, I'm actually using these as my base for the chicken instead of the potatoes. There you go, man. Thank you. They're pretty good roasted like this. Just. They do not taste like potatoes, so don't assume they taste like potatoes, because they don't. I cut up a couple of nectarines, so we're gonna have these on the side. And I found a really old package of Betty Crocker biscuit mix in my pantry. It's probably about four years old. But look, they rose just fine, so we're gonna have those too. 
Some of the chicken I am using is for, I don't know what to call this, but we, we jokingly call it like cheesy potato chicken bacon bake or something like that. But it's essentially potatoes, like chunked up potatoes, chunked up chicken with a fat and salt and pepper kind of all mixed together and then topped with crumbled bacon and cheese. We are going to put a cover on this and bake it in the oven at about 375 degrees for an hour, take the lid off and let it go another 30 or so. It does take a very long time to bake, but it's a huge crowd pleaser in my house. There's really no recipe to this. I originally made it in a nine by 13 pan and we gobbled it up so fast that now I make it in a 10 by 15. So this is a 10 by 15 Pyrex baking dish. And the idea is that as soon as I have this in the oven, I will prep some more of my potatoes right here and a little bit more of my chicken and make two freezer meal versions of this covered with a creamy sauce so the potatoes don't go gray. It's a little bit of an experiment, but we're gonna see how it goes. But for now, I'm putting foil on this and it's going in the oven for dinner tonight. Here we go, two more completed freezer potato cheesy chicken bake whatever. I made them exactly the same as the large one that I put in the oven. The only thing I did different is I, if you have heavy cream, you can just use that and kind of cover the potatoes with the heavy cream to protect them from turning brown. But I didn't have any of that. So I improvised with some half and half and sour cream and I mixed them together. It's probably about four cups of half and half with one 16 ounce container of sour cream, mushed, mixed it all up with a whisk and a little bit of crushed red pepper flake and kind of poured it on top, made sure all the potatoes had been covered. And then top of bacon and cheese, covered these with foil and they are going directly into the freezer with the rest of my freezer meals and we are almost done prepping this chicken. This is what the potato bake looks like when it's done. It should be a little browner on top. I should probably should have turned the oven to broil, but the potatoes and chicken are cooked 100%. The kitchen smells amazing. And I did make a little salad to go with it. So this is our dinner for tonight and I've got two more in the freezer. Next freezer meal is going to be basically just a marinade for cilantro lime chicken. Have my chicken breasts here. I'm going to butterfly them and probably put about two pounds in each Ziploc bag with a third of the batch I'm making here. So I have three bunches of cilantro chopped up right here, the zest of only one lime because that's all I had. And I'm gonna juice that and use this bottled lime juice for the rest because it's just in my fridge and I'm out of fresh limes. I have some olive oil, black pepper, chili powder. What? This is not right. Hang on, there it is. Okay, some cumin and some salt. So we're gonna mix all of these together. The Recipe will be linked down below for your measurements and I'm tripling in this. Then we're gonna divvy it all up and I'm gonna freeze the marinated chicken. So when I want just a super easy dinner, we're just gonna thaw the bag of chicken and throw it on the grill, boom, we're done. We can chop the chicken and put it in a salad, we can put it in a wrap, or it can be just a side with some rice and some veggies. Here's my marinade, I know it looks totally crazy. I blended it with my immersion blender. So if you guys don't have one of those, they're pretty handy. And I made my bags already, so I'm gonna measure out, I think two pounds of chicken per bag and put them in there. Okay, three more chicken meals ready to go into the freezer. I have a feeling when I go for a girls weekend, when everything opens back up again, this will be Dave's go-to. Okay, the last thing I'm doing with the rest of my chicken that I have is seasoning it with just this taco seasoning on both sides with a little bit of oil and I'm going to grill it and slice it. Once it's grilled and sliced, I'll put it into probably three individual baggie sizes for a very quick cooked taco flavored chicken, mostly for my chicken tortilla soup recipe that I have. I'll leave that linked down below. This is the probably the part that I don't wanna do the most when I make the chicken tortilla soup. So having this part done is gonna make that process really, really fast. Completed grilled chicken. And man, if I wasn't so full from dinner, I would, I'd probably eat this right now because it smells so good. Hey, we are outside in my garage fridge. And I just wanted to show you some of the freezer meals that I have out here. This is not all of them. I divvied them like kind of a little less than half inside in my kitchen freezer as well. I have 10 right here and it actually doesn't take up that much room. And I may have gotten one out today for lunch <laughs> because I wanted to heat up the taquitos and uh, feed them to my kids for lunch. So here's something that I actually really like about the freezer meals that I didn't think that I would like as much is I actually like using them for lunches for my kids, especially as they're home during the summer. Lunch is always like, Oh my gosh, do they have to eat again every single day? What is up with this? We've already been going through that because they've done school at home for the last 10 weeks or whatever amount of time it's been. I have no sense of time anymore. But now, at about 11 o'clock, I can pull one of these out and pop it in the oven and at like 12.30, it's ready to go. Um, hello, 
If you have not done freezer meals and then used it for lunches for your kids, that's gonna be a whole game changer in the whole meal prep business. I am loving it. So anyway, that's all of my chicken. Half of it did have quite a bit of prep involved to start it off with, and then the other half was like super easy and super quick. I did film it over the course of several days and we did eat a lot of the chicken over several days as well, like lunches and dinners and stuff. So we did eat quite a bit of it while I was also freezer meal prepping too, if that makes sense. All the recipes, if there are some that I've used, I will leave that down below in the description box along with any tools that I talked about in the video if you would like to shop it later. Let me know if you guys enjoyed freezer meal videos. I know it's not something I've done a lot, but I am trying to expand my horizons and learn a little bit and maybe perhaps I'd be willing to try some of your favorite freezer meals. So if you have a freezer meal that you think is the best ever and you want me to try it on my channel, leave me a link down below and I will try and do that um, in the next coming weeks. But I gotta eat some of this first. So it might, it may not be till July, but feels good. Feels good to have it done. Thank you for hanging out with me and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.